Welcome back, guys. We are going to be continuing this movie for Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Oh, my gosh. I, I don't know how to say anything about this film. This film, aside from it being confusing and horrible, that, that's the best way I can, I can describe this film. Uh, the entirety of this film goes into two parts. It goes into showing all these so-called heroes returning to the planet and fighting off, I would say, the space, you know, Nazis or, or whatever you want to call them. And then as soon as that ends, you have where the main character... She starts obviously messing around with the one guy that clearly did not know anything. And what gets me is you have these characters that are really hard to follow, <clears throat> that are not that interesting, and yet you make them somehow survive. And then the characters that you do we do like, you don't allow to survive, which makes no sense because honestly, the best character that you had, one of the best characters you had was General Titus's character, and he survived, thankfully. You had another character in this movie who was the one um, who wielded the, the dual, almost so-called lightsabers. And she died in this film, because all this was was getting ready for this empire to go down to the planet and wipe them all out, right? Well, it happened, and then as soon as that occurred, there was really no reason to get rid of the grain that you saw almost 40 minutes within the film of them trying to get rid of all the grain other than to build traps. Which again, I can understand they used uh, interesting tactics to take on this enemy. And then you had another character who was the main of Akis, who was the main villain of this. He, he kind of reminded me of a wannabe... I don't know, I can't think of the right word, because he, he was just one of those characters where I couldn't take him seriously, because every time he was on screen, it's like the guy was trying too hard to be this this ultimate villain, and then he goes into a tunnel taking on these peasants, and he's acting like the Terminator, he can't be stopped. It made no sense. And you have, you, you hear about Korra's background, which could have already been stated about what happened in the previous film, but no, you waited till the second film to reveal her background and the background was very cliche you kind of already figured out what happened and there was really no reason to wait till the second film she basically helped her adoptive father kill the king and queen she killed the princess got set up for it and that's why she she went on the run that's basically it and I don't know what the hell Zack Snyder was smoking or doing when he wrote these films, but dude, I don't know what happened because I'm not saying he is a horrible filmmaker. I'm not saying that there are some of his films I like. There are some of his films I cannot stand for the life of me. This is going to be a franchise I cannot stand. I wanted to go into this film expecting a better film. I wanted a better entertainment. I didn't get it. I was very bored with this film. It was pretty much like you, you were trying to redo, I guess, the Empire going against the Rebel Alliance, and it didn't take. You had a multi-high-dollar Empire going against a peasant village, and somehow they survived because you had all these other characters that were, that were you know, good soldiers, and, and most of these characters, they sucked. They sucked. The only characters that I found interesting was obviously the one Titus and the one that was dual wielding the wannabe lightsabers. Unfortunately, she died. Um, you didn't really get to know too much about her background from what I saw other than she lost her family. That's the reason why she cut off her arms and she got um, those cyborg type arms. Titus lost all his men. That's the reason why he became a, um, uh, you know, an outlaw. And then you saw what happened to Korra. Then you saw what happened to the one that was part of the resistance, you know, how her village was attacked and she was rescued by the resistance. And then you saw how the one um, Tar Tarzark, he 
was a prince of a planet and he was smuggled off world so he could be saved. That's all it was, guys. Again, is this movie worth it to watch? No, it is not. I'm going to be honest right now. If you guys enjoy the lore, you guys enjoy everything about this film, that is fine. I'm not going to say, hey, you cannot watch it. By all means, enjoy it if that's what you like. But guys, I am never touching this franchise again. I don't think I'm ever going to touch this franchise again. If there is going to be a third movie, uh, I don't know what to say. It, it, it it's, it's so bad to where it doesn't make sense. Most of the things they do in this movie don't make sense. I mean, you're going to go down to a village where you could just destroy it in orbit, which we were going to do anyway. Um, you get rid of all the grain to make grow warfare tactics. Okay, that's the only smart thing you did. It makes sandbags, which again, did not make much of a difference because they still blew everything up to begin with. Um, you show Kor's background, which you could have done in the first film. Um, same thing with everyone else in this film. You could have still showed their background in the first film. You had characters that were on screen a lot longer than what they needed to be. You had very, I would say less uh, slow motion than you did in the first film, which I think kind of helped it. Because again, the slow motion gets old after a while. It, I, I will admit that. Um, the other thing that made me take out of the movie is that the, it didn't really piss me off. It, it more made me laugh. Like you had this this private, this soldier, how he left to still use them to be like, hey, you know, I'm not really on their side. I'm just going to act like I'm on their side so I can get information and I can warn you when the threat's coming. Dude, you know the threat was coming and yet you didn't do nothing. You didn't help no, You didn't help this village at all the entire time they were gone. And yet you're in the freaking military and you didn't do nothing. And then as soon as they attack, you just get one shot by some guy. And it was weird because most of the soldiers look like the same actors but different in different uniforms, which was kind of interesting. And how this kid just gets one shotted and how these peasants are really not even doing anything other than fighting off these soldiers that are more trained than them and somehow being able to kill them. And there's some that, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? It's like, you got a gun in your hand. What do you think you do? You look at it and go, oh, hey, look, there's a hole in there. I wonder what it does if I pull the trigger. Like, wh what do you think? These characters came across stupid. They came across ignorant. They, they came across like this, like just dumb idiots, man. And that's what really bugged me is like, I could not connect this movie at all. I could not enjoy it. I could not sit there and say, hey, this is a good movie. This is something I would, I would spread the word about. No, this is, this is just horrible. I mean, there are movies again by Zack Snyder. I don't mind watching. Um, Justice League, the unlimited cut was not that bad. Rebel Moon 1, Rebel Moon 2 sucked. Um, Batman vs. Superman sucked. Man of Steel was not that bad. 300 was a good movie. Um, Army of the Dead was eh. Watchmen, did not like it. Sucker Punch was in between. Dawn of the Dead was a good movie. There are certain movies that Zack Snyder does that is whether a hit or miss. And that's how I'm going to say it. It's a hit or miss. And this was a hit or miss. This was a miss. This tanked. And I don't know how you thought this was going to be. If this was inspired by Star Wars, I'm not sure how it was inspired by Star Wars. Because it looked like it was inspired not only by Star Wars, it was inspired by Vikings. It was inspired by um, your 300 movie. It was inspired by, you know, DC, all these different things, which again is fine. But there was so much stuff going on to where you couldn't keep up what was going on. And it made no sense. And a lot of things they were really trying to have you do in this film didn't make sense at all. This movie completely did not make sense. I know I'm probably repeating myself, but guys, if you, again, if you enjoy this movie, fine. But if you didn't, then, and you're on the same, uh, you know, spec with me saying, hey, this movie sucks. This movie is not a good movie. Um, then I understand. I can understand the, the, the backlash. I can understand the uh, getting upset. I can understand the just the drama behind this film of like, hey, do not watch this film. I will say this now, guys, do not watch this film. It is not worth it. It is not worth your time. It is not worth, if you got Netflix just to watch this film, then you need to get your money back. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, there are other movies on Netflix I would definitely watch over this movie. But what do you guys think about Rebel Moon Part Two, The Scar Giver? Um, one, one out of 10, I give, it, I give it a half star. That's how bad this movie was. But let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you as always on the next one.